So, the timeline for John Stahlhammer's lab. I met John in the summer of 69, which I think is before anybody else did. So he didn't have any computer graphics equipment. What he had was some stuff that he'd been given uh, at uh, some sort of Western Electric computer that Bobby Watkins worked on, but never got anything running. Big gray rack full of stuff. I don't really know anything about it. And he, was also, he also had an IBM 7-track tape drive that I worked on. He heard that, that I had knew about digital tape drives because I had been going out to k &L Junkyard and scrounging a, 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 a seven-track tape drive that I built up in my dorm room. And John somehow heard, I guess I made a presentation in a class about it, and John heard about that and said, can you see if you can get this thing going over the summer? It had, as I recall, something like 80 tubes in the in the, uh, the tape drive and about 100 relays. And then there was a, an exerciser controller test unit that IBM had given him. We didn't have a computer to hook it to, we just had this test equipment. It had another 100 tubes and 100 relays or something like that. So that was my introduction to digital logic, <laughs> was trying to get that thing to run, which I did by the end of the, end of the day. And then I left, and when I came back three years later, I looked up Starhammer, hoping to get a part-time job, and I walked into the lab, and there's Dave and Jeff, and they're making pictures on a screen, and I said, holy cow, this is great. I think I got discharged in 69 in the Air Force, and then came back and got my grade point back up enough so that I was simply on probation. You were always on probation. Well, it's better than being expelled. <laughs> 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 yeah, but... Uh, we worked on that for a while, <laughs> and you know, at the very end when I needed to graduate, they said, you know, what's the requirement for graduation? I said it too well. I can do that, and I did just that. It's two point zero bar, <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, most of the, I think the. I would have, it'd have been higher if I hadn't been in a graphics lab. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but it, but it, Cause that's where you were all the time. I, I know, and well, that's where I got most of my education. Is in there, working okay. around all these other guys who had had actually more real world experience than I did, and they were doing stuff, and I just got in there and did it with them. And then the reason I the reason I was in the lab is because when I got out of the service, I came back. I met John for I guess the second time. Found out he was my faculty advisor, and I, he had a meeting with me, and he, we talked, and, it, and I told him I just got out of the Air Force, and I was an autopilot technician in electronics. He, he had this AGT-30 with a gazillion transistors in it, and he figured some of them would go out every so often. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they did, and they did, and he wanted somebody who could go in there and find them and replace them. So I came to this lab, and I worked on the AGT, and I was probably the one responsible for breaking most of the stuff on it, because... Uh, uh, you know, I sit down in the terminal and, and I found out that if I, if I banged on the table real hard, it would put an eye up on the screen. Yeah. You know, the thing was sensitive to that. So, and the AGT 30 had this weird instruction set where you put blah blah blah, con, apostrophe indirect thing. So, uh, you know, type one and bang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that bit. Uh, I, I, think, I think when I first when I showed up in '72, um, you guys were just finishing the 32K upgrade. Oh upgrade. yeah, max the thing out because yeah. it had this 15-bit memory right. space. Yeah. So my first job was the the RAN tablet, um, which had a whole mess of coax cables into a bundle about that big that was all encased in, in rubber. I mean, it, it was a huge thing that ran back to the controller, and the controller was interfaced to the variant. So what and other, I got that working. What other equipment was there besides the AGT? Oh, yeah. So, 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 so John, got, John got... What some of the working equipment was. Yeah. Yeah, what well, the working equipment was. You know, they were very same. There was a car punch. That was my desk when I first showed up. And a card reader? Yeah, a card punch, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Card yeah, there's a card got, punch. Then we got the card reader, reader yeah. there. Right. And we built an interface for that. Yeah, okay. Well, that was before I got it, because that was already working. But, um, <coughs> so John, from someplace, John got this educational system 
donated. This company went out of business. That's where the Variant 620, variant. Yeah. Okay. all right, um, Variant 620 mini computer with paper tape I.O. on it. And it had an interface of some sort to, originally, to a slow motion video disc. So it was an educational, that was, okay. my understanding was an educational system. And there, there was this sort of weird looking console thing that it, it fit into. And so they were doing video based computer controlled education before they went out of business. And John somehow or other got this stuff. I think it was somebody from Arizona maybe yeah. that he knew in Arizona. And I built I built an interface to two nine track tape drives that John somehow got money for and then I designed an interface for that. Yeah, we a little bit. We had that big for the variant. That massive printer that we plotter in there too. Yeah, we got the yeah. plotter to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. Calcom plotter. That was that was yeah. one of those um, computer science giveaway things. They gave yeah. up on trying to make it work, so <laughs> I brought it back and made it work. I remember the music program that uh, yeah. with, uh, That's right, because that was that was the other big thing that happened in there. Because um, Hal Chamberlain originally did some of that. No, it's, uh, and then yeah, Henry, Henry, Rich. Henry, Henry, yeah, and then Henry, yeah, Henry came over and uh, Henry we, yeah, cool we stuff. got him. We, with one of the two pass you know, to compile the thing and then build these data structures and then run it again. And uh, I told him that what we did, we, we chose to, uh, the thing we liked best was uh, Bach and Takata and Few. And the reason we chose that is because it sounded okay in one quarter real time. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the way it would come out, you know, <laughs> and record it on the record it on the <laughs> <tape> <laughs> and then play it back. <laughs> so is it a true story that Henry was building a music machine and wire wrapped it to the point that he figured it never was going to work and made a coffee table out of it? I, I think that's correct. Yeah, because yeah. he had a coffee table at home. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, I also remember the my it was, well, it was we were in Galt's digital logic yeah. lab, or digital logic class, and in a lab to go in it. And uh, I remember one day I was in there and I was in this massive wire wrap thing of the AGT memory interface, this huge car with all this TTL on it, and and uh, I think I'd wire wrap the thing up, and I was back there trying to debug this thing. And the guy came down from the from the logic lab. He says, you need to be in the logic lab doing your work. I said, well, what are you doing in there? I said, well, we're working on flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> you know what I got here? <laughs> we had 190 t chips or something on this damn interface, and he wanted me to come down and hook up a flip-flop. So golf finally came in. He says, well, basically, I had missed all of those labs. And Galt says, well, I, you know, you got to do something. So I said, fine, what do you want me to do? He says, I want you to do a, a binary to gray encoder. He says, how many bits? <laughs> 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 so you, you put it in, binary on one side, push the button a few times, and gray kind of started coming out the other side. And then you flip the switch, and you push the button, and it comes back the other way. And uh, sure enough, the gazada is equal to gazenta. And, and you got an A. I got an A. <laughs> Which that's brought you up to the 2.0? That's the only thing that I ever... That got me to the that's, the only, that's the only way I ever got A's, was in the lab portion. <laughs> of course. So you, you showed up in 75? I showed... I, keep in mind, I showed up... Uh, John gave me a tour of the lab. He showed me the processor that that everybody had worked on, and I explained to him why it was a bad design. <laughs> and, uh, oh, this is the ever fairly thing? Or yeah, ECL thing? The ECL stuff. And I uh, explained to him that a couple, because my background is in RF transmission lines. And, you know, talk about terminating here and twisted pairs here, and things like that. <laughs> but then, uh, and, and that's what got me accepted because I was kind of a Low average student as an undergraduate, and the admissions office didn't want me to be accepted. They didn't want me. <laughs> but John. Did they want you? Well, well, they didn't want me back. <laughs> but, but John overrode that. He said he, apparently he wanted somebody with some high speed logic because I didn't do an ECL design before. So that's what got me in. But then I was just in the class, I was getting classwork out of the way as quick as possible. And 
I don't think I really spent any time in the lab. Uh, for you took a lot time. of math. Seems like you were always in the math field. Yeah, I was doing a lot of math. <laughs> well, and Nick and I were in the library constantly. We read every University of Utah dissertation. Uh, 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 but, uh, so I guess maybe it was uh, 76 when I really started pushing stuff in the lab. Yeah. Um, I know the. I remember that I had a stash of uh, two N thirty fifty fives, and um, if the AGT thirty would crap out, the the, the um, CRT would crap out, and uh, so I, because of the series uh, regulator, and since I had the right parts, I'd go in and replace them in the morning, and since I replaced them. I got to use the machine all day, and I'd finish up and go home, and anybody else could have it after that. But that's what happens when you try to drop 150 volts across a, a transistor that's only good for 90. All I know <laughs> is that my supply of series regulator transistors <laughs> got me through long enough to do the dissertation, so I did that. And then uh, and I you was, also spent a lot of time fixing the disk drive. Well, that's because we didn't have enough space. We needed another disk drive, but we only had one controller. And so I just wire wrapped a controller. Uh, it's just a TTL, I mean, it's how hard can it be? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and so and a wired out. Software? Sorry? Software? Well, actually, the, the software's pretty straightforward. You know, if you're adding that software. It's just, another, it's just, just another address. I mean, how complicated yeah, that's true. it is. So that, that became my disk drive. Uh, and so I was storing all of the raster images over there. And uh, the only other thing I really did was that uh, uh, ill-fated uh, movie where we took one bit on the one of the registers of the AGT and, and then uh, took that bit out, ran it into uh, FET, and then ran that into... Uh, it was better than that. I duct tape a photo cell onto the light. That's right. In the, in the register. No, that was what you did. What I did was. Oh, actually, you did. Some, yeah, I went and just tapped into the signal. Oh man. We, I thought I, we had something that, hooked up when I was when I was there. We had something hooked up that made noise. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So because I, I have my Super 8 camera. Right. right. So yeah, that's well, what you were. You're, you're what right, I did yeah. is I stole that 16 millimeter camera from yeah. Bart from some department. Yeah, right. And put a solenoid in there that would punch the. Yes. Well, single, the single frame. Yeah. It eventually ruined the camera, but we did get, this was in 1977. It was. Uh, and we took the film before it had been developed, uh, got on the plane, we all went out yeah. to uh, San Jose, and I had it developed out there. I remember. And the three of us went and looked at We're it. We're the only people who've ever seen it. Thank goodness. <laughs> which, which, and which, I don't which, think you've which, ever talked about it in public. It's an before. animation. It's an animation that. It's an anima it. it animation using my scanline algorithm for curved surfaces, and quite frankly, the, this every still scene looked pretty good. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of confidence in it, uh, and I had slept on the floor of the lab. Uh, is this ground away? Just to just to make sure as it ground away. Of course, this thing goes click every uh, couple of minutes, so I'll wake up. <laughs> and go back to sleep. And then, uh, but then it, you know, so you know, a few hundred frames and get it, you know, wrap it up. You slept on the floor. It was a raised floor, right? It's a raised floor. Yeah. You were you there when we moved everything out of the lab and and built the raised floor? No. <laughs> Well, you're lucky. <laughs> I, can, I can imagine. I'm just thinking of all that. You actually put that in there? Yeah. It was John. John got it from some yeah. surplus place. Of course. I mean, it was of course. John. Yeah. Of Where surplus was what it's all about. <laughs> Remember the day we went out to the state surplus place? Got this box that was big enough for three of us yeah. to stand in. Yeah. What's in it? Oh, about 80 pounds of stuff. Well, what is it? About 80 pounds. Because we had no idea what was in there, just stuff. Well, we, stuff. we, 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 we do a little but bit. We figured some electronic, there. you know, we saw there was a transistor doing it. So we got in there and started sorting through this thing. And most of the stuff you pick it up and okay, that's, we know what that is. But that over in this pile and that in this pile. And never so often we pick up this thing. That, what the hell 
Why is it that so? You can look at it, you know, could not figure this out. And what's this? <laughs> and would, oh, that's a so and so. And you'd look at it again and say, you know, that's the only thing it could do. <laughs> <laughs> of course he's right on that. And it's a fact, you know, he could just, this is. But those sponsors of stuff came from Western Electric when they canceled the Safeguard program. They scrapped a whole bunch of stuff, and it was chock full of some sort of complementary logic yeah. that, that, that Western did that nobody else ever used or anything like that, and we never used it for anything. No. But we hauled a couple of great big, huge power supplies out of there, and that's what Ogden was using to power up the... She was building the fast processor on, on okay. big Ogap wire-wrap boards. Carter says, this isn't going to work. All right. but, but one of them was a two-volt supply to be used for terminations. I mean, these things, they were linear supplies, right? They weighed about 150 pounds a piece or something like that. For you see, but, they, but they came out of the Safeguard ABM program. I'm glad, I'm glad we... So I was working at Western yeah. when they canceled that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, um, they had voluntary layoffs. And even though I wasn't working on Safeguard, I took a voluntary layoff because I got a three months uh, salary before going back <laughs> to school at, at State. So this was they had good parting gifts. It was a, it was better than that. They uh, so I I had been working on loan to Bell Labs, right. and, um, and while I was a Western employee, and um, what happened was that Bell Labs got wind of the fact that I was leaving early to go back to school, and said, "Well, what are you going to do in the month between leaving and?" So I'm just nothing. So a couple work for Bell Apps. So I worked for Bell Apps for uh, a month before coming to NC State. The same month you were getting paid by Western. The same month I was getting paid by Western, which really irritated Western, <laughs> but got me a job at Bell Apps <laughs> after graduating. <laughs> there you go. And I was still teaching school that year. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. I didn't come back as a sophomore in Double E until the fall of seventy six. Year later. Year later, right. Yeah. Yeah. And then a year after that I talked my way into the master's program in graphics and digital design. Mm -hmm. And became an official groupie. Official grad student. Official grad student, yes. 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 Okay. But I married him <laughs> in the meantime. So. No, you were a member of the EGADS team. I was a member of the EGADS team. Experimental graphics, animation, and design system. Design. That's I remember, after you. I remember the EGADS logo, logo yes. that I rendered in, uh, <laughs> made out of the Bézier curve. Yep. Yeah. And it looked like red plastic. Back in the days when we could only make plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the phone plastic, plastic was better than chalk. Plastic was better than chalk. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Or faceted chalk, whichever. <laughs> Nobody that did anything interesting in John's lab would have ever been let in there by the administration. <laughs> no. He, John's, John bet on people that he thought were going to do something. And, and for, for unusual reasons. Yeah. But I'm not sure that he bet on me to do, do anything other than keeping his computer running. That was important. And then you discovered Which, that you could write code. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and a lot happened after that. I got in there and it's, well, I, I got it running now, but. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I just started picking stuff up and then, well, the thing that, you know, it was, John had a way of collecting people. And I'm not sure what his sorting algorithm was. But he, some of them could necessarily work out. Well, sometimes, but I mean, but mostly we had, we had, yeah. we had remarkable chemistry in there. And uh, everybody, every, there was a level of excitement, I think, that people had about oh, this stuff. Well, well, I mean, we, would, yeah, we were. We, it, it was a very coherent group. It was a lot of excitement. Why? Why were we so excited? Because it was brand the, new. There right. Was it was all yeah. of this opportunity. Well, right. I remember we would sit down at the, the new, electronics, new Electronics magazine would come. Yeah. And we would jump to the back and look at all of the new stuff, and all the new components. And we'd sit there and we would, I wonder, you know, what could we do with this? You know, and we would have, you know, oh, here's a so-and-so. What could we do, you know? And we would talk about these things and, and there, was a lot of, there was a lot of energy in that. And, you know, people just liked to, liked to we like to show them off. 
You know, we like to, I mean, be, 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 creatively, you know. I think, I think another part of it was, was we could do hardware and software. I mean, there were there yeah, lots yeah. of places where those were real silos, right? right. You know, where, where no, you can't touch the, the hardware. Touch it. We're going to take it apart. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the other thing was that the pictures were just very sexy. Oh, yeah, the whole yeah. notion that oh, here's, yeah. here's a, here's, we're doing pictures, at least for, for me. Yeah, so. I, I remember I walked into the lab when I you know, went to try to find Stonehammer to get a part-time job. I figured I could repair stuff like Dave. And, and I walked in, and there was, there was this drawing of something up on the screen. I'm like, wow. I, I, I mean, I'd never seen anything other than a Model 33 teletype this was interface to a computer. To a computer. No, and then Jeff reached over and turned a knob. <laughs> and it was like, whoa! <laughs> you can make it move. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like it's in, it's in, it's in, it, it looks like it's in 3D. This it's is, not just a this drawing. Is, this, is you know? this is a lot of excitement. Cool. Yeah. yeah, well, it was kind of, I remember, you know, that point, it was, uh, I remember Debbie in one of her uh, programming classes, they had to, they had to write a, I think it was a 3D tic-tac-toe. Yeah, yeah. You know, they had to write a software for that, and so I think I wrote the display for that, so she wrote the program to, you know, to play the game, and I played, and I played the display back. So when they had, whenever Debbie had a competition with somebody else in the class, you know, they had a playoff, everybody in her class would come over and watch, <laughs> and watch the thing on the screen because, oh, that's a lot. I, I remember that because you know, on one of them, they had, they had like a dial-up um, TI yeah. writer or something like that <laughs> that, they were, that they were using. And, and there are these they guys, to, who send their, it's this AI group. program, and they're saying, oh, beta's up to 3.4. And we're going, yep, going to get clocked right there. And, you know, 3D, tic-tac-toe. I mean, it's the whole yeah. difference between yeah. computers that only do numbers and computers make pictures that people can understand and interact with. Was yeah. just, oh, well, using, you know, exciting. using our... Still you, is. Using visual all. bandwidth is a lot more efficient than... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It doesn't matter whether it's more efficient or not. We ate lunch together almost every day. Yeah. A large yeah. Mm -hmm. that, have, did that start before you left? Oh, yeah. We were, we were talking about going over at Baxley's Buffet yeah. and, uh, and cleaning them out of uh, wishbones. <laughs> you know, they had that special yep. cut of chicken. That, yep. the, the wishbone was a separate cut. And we would go pick them all out. <laughs> but that was... Um, well, that's where I learned a lot, because I just sat and listened until I came back to school and mm -hmm. started really actually understanding. Do we go to two guys for, for lunch when you were there? I remember sitting around the table with John, two guys a lot. Yeah. And John went with us to lunch. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. 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 I mean, not always, but, right. but often. Not a lot. Yeah. But it, was, it was part of the routine. We, we go to lunch together, we were, and we're talking constantly. Tell but, to, you know, We'd go in in the morning, we'd triple in in the morning, doing whatever we're doing. You were married, you came early. True. Um, I was also in a hurry to graduate, but the uh, lunch was the anchor point. That's true. That, that was what got, everybody was there, everybody was talking, and then however the, you know, some people stayed all night, some people left at five o'clock, um, but lunch was the, the nail and the... So John built a couple machines in his basement. Um, you know, other research, uh, Chuck at, at Ohio State and Bob Evans at Miami um, said, can you, can you build me a thing that I can do graphics on? And John did that in the basement of his house. I don't know how much money he lost on it. Um, but when we decided to start the company, we said, John, you can be part of this, but I, but he was too burnt out with it at that point, I guess, or didn't, yeah, but didn't but want the to. That, the fact that he has done, done it, the fact that, the fact that never, technology that came out of that lab was then exported to somebody else yeah. in, a, in another research lab, set a precedent so that when you came along with, and, and I remember uh, starting off the thinking behind the, the processor, you and I are talking about the memory interface. I don't recall thinking in that in terms of product. I think I uh, was thinking of it more in terms of a research project, which 
but it's a fairly natural transition given that background. You, to take yeah, yeah. you were gone before that, that thinking changed. Okay. No, it, it, well, I always thought it was a research project because I promised to do anything for anybody. <laughs> if, I, if I had a thought that I had a concept of how I might possibly be able to design this, I'd give it a product name and a price. <laughs> and, you, and you'd say, you did what? <laughs> you promised them what? Well, I just, you know. It, but that was, yeah, I was, I was, was gone. Because it was a research machine for researchers. Right. Was, yeah, that's and it uh, was universally used by researchers, yeah. and, uh, including me. <laughs> With the sticking in the back of your Volvo. I didn't tell you, yeah, but you you left before John did the. Digitech. Were you part of Digitech? That yeah. was John's company. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so you were first hand. I remember sitting in the, in the stoop outside of Daniels trying to come up with a name. Yeah. And, and I quit my job at Terminal Communications to go be part of Digitech. And I went back to the same old office on the third floor of Daniels and sat there and made every money. And we needed money. <laughs> We had this eating thing that we had gotten used to. So uh, <clears throat> I got, I went, ran down to uh, Columbia, South, West Columbia, South Carolina, got a job with NCR. That's you know, so I had to part ways with Digitech before we had, before there was ever enough come together to go make anything happen. I had to I had to eat. But somehow or another, in order to do this, in the, they had to buy some parts. Yeah. Had to do the work. Yeah. That was in John's basement. All in John's basement. Yeah. yeah. But that was, you know, that was precedent. That was something that I just was, remember going over there and they, they were saying, Do you have any idea why none of our frame buffer works? Why is it making this noise on you know, refresh cycles that all these, all those are zillion 4K RAM chips, and on refresh cycles they would all go. Which was some sort of heating on, on they were plugged into uh, wire wrap sockets. And there was some sort of heating causing the, the, the leads to expand just a tad. And yes, it would make noise. It's it wasn't just scary. it wasn't just the power supply. It was actually coming out of the out of the board. Back in the back of the lab, I had my personal project, which was a 12-bit mini computer. Oh yeah. And you know, why, why 12 bits? Well, because I can only afford three 181s. <laughs> That's perfectly understandable. <laughs> so it ended up being 12 bits. But I didn't realize that you were playing 181s before. So 2901 was a godsend. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. And then, uh, coincident with that, came 16K. 16K DRAM. 16K by yeah. one DRAM. Yeah. I paid $60 a piece for the ones for my first frame buffer at school. Well, I just remember you. That that the, those I remember those two yeah. parts as the flash points. And, and the sixteen by sixteen multiplier on the TRW. Oh, that too. That okay. all happened at the same time. Forty one sixteen. Yes, forty one sixteen. Oh yeah. Did you know? Yeah. So this is just yeah. a convergence of availability that well, it, happened right Yeah, now. it was. I, you know, sometimes when I've made a talk, it's been about you know. The, the great times are when there's some big inflection point in the technology that allows you to do something that you haven't been able to do before. And this was one of those points where yeah. you, you, know, you, you, you could build a processor, you could get enough memory for it, right? and you could do DSP or fast math, whatever you wanted to do. That all, all these chips came together. I mean, other revolutions were later, you know, you could do ASICs. <laughs> well, good golly, you can do any, you know, whatever you want in an ASIC. And, 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 and it's not just, <laughs> not just that. Because we did everything wire wrap, right? I mean, yep. we, we produced all the original Iconos boxes, I don't know, probably a hundred of them in wire wrap, but then it became possible to do some PC layout with something other than black tape for and Bishop acetate. graphics, yeah, right? You know, on a big acetate thing. Um, which is what we did, but then you could actually use a computer to do this. And it did, I remember visiting somebody, um, and they had they had 500 grand in a CAD system in order to do print circuit board layouts. Well, that wasn't going to happen. I started. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but later on, 
So where did that transition? So this was a research project. I remember very distinctly it was a research project. Yeah. Building the building the uh, you know building yeah. the high speed processor. When did it become a commercial? Because I was gone. You were gone. I missed this. What? How did it? What was the transition? There was a night that we yeah. sat at the red linoleum table yeah. that's still in our house. It came from my daddy's office. Uh, at the house on Carlton Avenue behind the Wendy's, off the Western Boulevard. And he said, we've had three people ask us to build them one. Maybe we could make a company. And we sat there until it was late afternoon in the summertime, yeah, and we, we didn't get up from the table until it was absolutely with full door. Yeah. And I will never forget when he came in and said, Dave just called me and said, I'm getting ready to design a new DRAM. What do you need to do graphics? <laughs> And then we got Nibble Mode. <laughs> yeah, Nibble Mode, yeah. Well, I called Jared Mostek one time, and yep. the first time, and I said, hey, Dave, how you doing? Blah, 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 blah. I said, Dave, I need to talk to whoever is the application engineer for your 16K DRAMs. And Dave said, me. I do. Small world. Yeah, so, I mean, you talk about the way, you know, this thing could progress and things that you couldn't do, now you can do them. And I remember the, the thing that kept coming up to me is that, when we were on U.S. meeting, we counted gates. And then I go in there and we did, you know, the, the sitting down for the, Thomas did the first work on U.S.B. 3. It's only another couple thousand gates. <laughs> only. There were, there were some, really, I mean, it just, there was this transition to that. I mean, you know, the first, first computer, First PC, rather, you know, that I've fully got, I've got an entire 64K in memory of this thing. All I can tell, I can pay. So, oh, no, Mac. You can get that thing up to a Mac. And I remember getting 16, I remember getting the, the first NMOS 64Ks. My 64K. Put them in there, they were zero weights, the only zero weights paid parts you could get that for those, and we filled it up. And now you can get that much on an L3 cash on. I'm old, I can't remember names, but I was in a meeting with these pioneers who were talking about, and then I also uh, praise chief architect, all of a sudden. And they were talking about how they got into computer architecture. And I got they come around to me and I said, well, I, my first machine was a 12-bit microprocessor, but I forgot to put in a means for writing into the ad address register, so there was no branch. And at that point, I gave up and went into computer graphics instead. 